In this video, you will learn how to place a grid over a blank piece of paper. Now, if you're following along in my class, the first step to this process is finding a printed image, printing it, and placing a perfect grid over that image. If you haven't done this step, go ahead and stop this video now. Watch the video on my page that shows you how to do so, all right? And if you are following along, if you watched that video and did that step, you're going to notice I switched the picture because that other photograph was not a photo that I had taken. So this is a photo of my daughter. I'm going to, I decided I'm going to draw her. So I'll use this as an example. So the first thing we have to do is we have to count our boxes. So when I did my grids, I did my grids at one inch by one inch, and I'm going to go ahead and count them. So mine is eight boxes wide. I always like to write that down so I don't forget, and 10 and, I'd say mine's about 10 and a, 10 and a half boxes tall, okay? So I'll write 10 and a half. Now, I can set that aside and work on my large sheet of paper. Now as I do this, I am limited to the size of my paper, but I could make my boxes as big as I wanted. Say I was going to be taking this photo and turning it into a mural. Um, I could do these boxes, you know, three feet by three feet, as long as they're all squares and I have eight of them going across and ten and a half of them going down. I want to slightly enlarge this image, um, so I'm going to be doing my boxes at one and a half inches. These boxes here are one by one, so if I go one and a half by one and a half, it's going to slightly enlarge it. I could double this going two by two. If I would do that, the paper that I have currently is not big enough. So I know that I need to start off by making eight boxes across. And the first step to doing that is lining up your ruler with the corner of your paper. And if you have a ruler like ours, the ruler or the zero is not quite on the end of the ruler. So you have to make sure you're always using the zero. And then you're gonna make marks, and in this case, I'm going to be making the marks every one and a half inches. Now, as a disclaimer, if you're doing this on your own, I want you to make your boxes or your lines as light as you possibly can. So even like that light, you probably can't even see that in the video. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be, the, be making my marks dark so that you're able to see them. If I do them really light, you're not gonna, it's not gonna show up in the video, but when you're doing this on your own, make the marks light. If you make them dark, you're not gonna cover them up and you're gonna have this nicely drawn portrait that's gonna have lines running through this. We don't want to see this in the end. So I'm going through and making my marks every one and a half inches, and I have to concentrate a little bit so I'm not off. You wanna make sure your marks are as spot on as you can get them. If they're off by even an, an eighth of an inch, that is gonna throw off your drawing. So I have my marks made along the bottom. Now I'm going to go along the top and do the same thing. I might not go all the way to the top of the paper. I might just go up a little bit but I'm going to make my marks at one and a half inches. Now I'm gonna take my ruler and connect these lines just like I did on my gridded paper. Now my ruler doesn't quite reach, so when I made these top marks, I should have been smart and I should have made them the height of my ruler, so I'm gonna go ahead and make those marks a second time. Now that I have my vertical lines, it's time for me to make my horizontal lines. And just another reminder, I am drawing my lines on here very dark, so it shows up in this video. When you do this process, you want your lines to be super, super light because these grid lines are going to be erased after a while. So now I'm gonna rotate my paper, and remember, I needed eight boxes across. This paper that I have is exactly enough for eight boxes across, and I need 10 boxes wide. And remember, my boxes need to be the same height as they are width. They need to be square. So I did one and a half inches, so I'm going to do one and a half inches. So I'm going to line my ruler up, the zero along the corner of my paper, and I'm going to measure out one, every one and a half inch. I'm gonna do this on both sides. 
now that I have marks on the left and the right, just like I did with my vertical lines, I need to connect my lines horizontally. So I'm lining up both points, putting my hand in the middle of my ruler so it doesn't move, and I'm drawing my lines. Now my original image is 10 boxes down. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 boxes. I have a little strip at the bottom that is going to be extra. I could leave that on for now so that when I'm shading down here, I can kind of shade off and we will trim this off at the end. So to recap, what I need to make happen is I've got my grid on my, on my printed image. I'm going to make a grid with different size boxes. They just have to be squares. My boxes on my printed image are one inch by one inch. My boxes here are one and a half by one and a half. So my image will be enlarged. And you don't have to do any calculating or multiplying to figure out the width of your paper. All you have to do is count the boxes. So I need to have eight boxes across and 10 boxes down for my image. Now I can use the grid method to recreate the contour lines that I see in this image. Stay tuned for a future video on how that's done. I hope that helped.